to Back Issues. I'm Tiffany. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. And today we're going to be talking about Batman Damned. Woo! Woo! These two read the first issue of the three-issue Black Label launching book, Batman Damned. You can't prove that. I can't. There's certainly not video evidence. There's a video. There's a video where we had a, a big old conversation about the controversy that surrounded this Part of this book, actually, yeah, this entire this entire book. Oh, it got the entire more book controversy. Yeah, so I figure we're gonna kind of we'll talk a little bit about Black Label, what it is, because I feel like we can't talk about this without talking about what Black Label is mm -hmm. and was. We'll talk about what happens in the book, and then we'll talk about the controversy. Okay. A lot of the Black Label books that are the prestige graphic novel format, like this European style look, mm -hmm. have like a cool way in which they present the hardcover book. Yeah. My Harleen book, which is another black label book, is spectacular. I didn't know there were more black label books. There oh, are yeah. lots of black label books. I thought after yes. this and the controversy, there was like, we're doing away with no, black no, label. No, 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 no. Just some of them just never came out. All right, this book is Batman Damned by Brian Azzarello with art by Lee Bermejo. Two of them work together on Joker, right? Mm -hmm. You guys talked about yes, Joker. Yes, we did so Joker. So you're familiar yeah. with that. Yeah. So let's talk about Black Label. What is Black Label? What was Black Label supposed to be? <laughs> what is it now? What does Black Label mean to you? What does it mean to you? <laughs> if we go back to 2008, Joker comes out, right? Joker turns out to be more of a success than DC or the creative team thought it would. Hmm. And people obviously wanted more. Right. And they didn't have any more. I can't. And so I, I, I got nothing left. And so DC was like, okay, um, work on something more. Do right. more. Something and we'll, that's like that. Yeah, yeah. and like they kind of started throwing around this term Jokerverse. Now you might be confused because in theory, right now a lot of people are calling the Joaquin Phoenix movie the Jokerverse and mm. what they might do with that. Just the Joker? Yes. Mm. There's also a I think Jeff Lemire black label book that has to do with Joker, and that has a sequel that is now also being called the Jokerverse. That's but in two thousand eight-ish, nine-ish, they were referring to to this continuation of Joker as like the Jokerverse. And inevitably, that name kind of morphed into Black Label. Uh. And this information all comes from Brian Azzarello and Lee Bermejo mm -hmm. in interviews. And actually kind of in the back of this, they talk a little bit, or he talks a little bit about Azzarello. Then we cut to Watchmen, the movie. Mm. It comes out, <laughs> it's rated R. Yeah. They were like, we're not doing any more R-rated superhero stories. Right. We're done with that. It didn't work out. Mm. What do you mean it didn't work out? It didn't work out. Yeah. But we are going to continue to use Zack Snyder for everything. Then there's like some sort of like event going on of some kind. And like they want to do some Justice League Dark thing. And so they're like, why don't you take what you're working on for the sequel. Like, like make it Justice League Dark. Batman hanging out with the Justice League Dark team. Brian, go ahead. Write that story. And like he's writing it. And like he and Bermeja are like, it's not working. This, mm. is, not, this is not working right at all. That whole thing gets shelved as well. They're like, forget that. But that's mm. when Jim Lee's like, hey, wait a minute. Let's use this for Black Label. Like, we're finally thinking about launching this imprint. Let's do that. Uh, now okay. you're thinking to yourself, hang on. Batman Damn definitely launched this imprint. But back in March of 2018, when they announced it, like, essentially 10 years after Joker came out, right. Superman Year One was supposed to be the flagship book, the Frank Miller book that we did. Yes. Oh. And it wasn't. Batman Damned. That would have made a lot of sense. Right? Yeah. But no. I, and I have a, I don't know for sure. I have a feeling it has to do with the fact that that book probably got delayed. Yeah, I would assume. So DC Black Label is supposed to be this format for creators to tell stories that are out of continuity. Now, if you look at the original like press release for this, it's supposed to tell, it's supposed to allow creators to have creative freedom. Mm -hmm. This is something that Jim Lee said that like this imprint is supposed to give creators creative freedom. Just keep that in the back of your head because we all know what happens <laughs> yeah. when this book launches, uh -huh. right? Just never forget that. I said creative freedom, but I what I really meant was... Creative freedom. Within the guise of our guidelines. It was also supposed to, again, still remain out of continuity, which it does. And when Warner Brothers puts out this press release, they also mention books like The Killing Joke, Watchmen. Just because they're dark? Well... They, they're talking about those where they're just like, they pointed to those as being like, some of our greatest hits were books that were created when artists were given that opportunity, mm. two of which are mature reader books. And so you, you could infer that Black Label was meant to be a mature reader line, mm -hmm. right? 
Yes. Right. Which is kind of solidified. Also it's black, you know, just dark. Right. Grim well, color. like the idea of like the the black calling it a black label, like in that in that term, also makes me think, of course, of like spirits, you know, and I mean yeah. like woo ghosts. I mean like alcohol, you know what I mean? Like uh, it gives you that like mature yeah. feeling to it, right? Yeah, calling it the black label. Yeah, movie. it's not the nude <laughs> label, <laughs> right? In a DC All Access episode, the host goes to Dan DiDio's office and they're chatting about some of the new stuff coming up for DC. At the same time, like, that Black Label was coming out, like, DC Zoom and Ink were being worked on, which were, like, a middle grade and, like, YA imprint they were also going to be focused on. And okay. so, like, when... So they're really separating the ages. Like, <laughs> they're tears. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're like, okay, cool. Like... That's what they're for. And as he's talking, he mentions that like DC and Zoom were for those age groups and that Black Label is supposed to be kind of more mature. And he says that. And I, I want to put that out there because a lot of people feel like Black Label wasn't supposed to be for mature readers. And it's like all signs point to it was. Right. Like, and that's just coming from interviews that you can find. Right. It also doesn't make sense if you're having two other labels coming out for specific age groups to be yeah. like, oh, we're having this third label. What's yeah. that for? It's all oh, ages. Nothing. Right. They decided that this was going to be the book that launched first mm -hmm. in lieu of Superman. Which was funny because in a lot of the Warner Brothers like press releases, it was always further down on the list. Mm. <laughs> they kept pushing it off. Well, no, they were just like, you know, we got Frank Miller and we got Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo working on a book. And Kelly Sue DeConnick is coming over to DC and she's going to write a Wonder Woman book. She never does. Like, the, bu the book never came out. Oh. Mm. And, like, there was another writer who was to come over and tell this, like, untold history of the DC universe that also never comes out. Mm. So anyway. No, we got that. It's um, Scott Snyder, right? You know, a, metal. He, no, he tells his own history lessons. Not the history of the DC <laughs> Universe, just his own history lessons. <laughs> so, all right. So now we have a background on Black Label. So now let's talk about the book, and then afterwards we'll talk about the controversy. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Some people sure. probably just like, I didn't finish this book. I highly recommend that you finish this book. Just mm. read it yourself, all right? Just read it yourself. In interviews, Brian Azzarello has said that, like, what he digs about this book is that like a it's supposed to be kind of like an experience to dio also like says that this is an experience you don't just read it like you're supposed to like part of the reason why it's in this format other than allowing the art to be bigger and whatever and also be more recognizable as a mature reader book like mm. oh it's a bigger book like, the, the comic book retailer could put it on like in another area if they would like to but also it's not something you you're not going to put in a bag and board necessarily you're right. going to leave it out and mm. read it and look at it and enjoy it and that was kind of what the hope was until everything else happened and he's had lots of people come up to him at cons and like give different theories about the book okay and he's like no two are alike and i won't tell them if they're right hmm. and i'm like that's cool yeah that's cool he also seemingly is really like i've read a couple of interviews and he seems kind of tired of being asked the same question <laughs> i was like that's fair. yeah i would be <laughs> that's fair if i had created a uh, a book I just wanted to well tell the known, story of. Notorious book. Yeah. I assume, yeah, he gets a lot of repeat. Right? Obnoxious. <laughs> but I mean, that happens with every creator, right? It's yeah. impossible to avoid. Some of them do, some of them really love it. Some of them, yeah. like, they, it just depends oh. on what it is that, like, they as the creator are getting out of it. And it's just a different interpretation of how he wants to interact with this. Oh, yeah. Mm. Not that they, uh, they all get annoyed by it. It's just the fact that, like, every creator gets asked the same questions over and over again. Like, oh, yeah. Because everyone is going to think that they're asking it for the first time. Sure. Or they're just like, I want my own answer. I'm well, looking yeah. it up. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could look it up, but. Uh, I just yeah. ask him. He's right there. Yeah. So what do you guys remember about the first issue? Other than the most obvious thing that you remember uh, about the first issue, which isn't in here. Yeah. That's, that's been. I mean, I pretty much remember nothing. Cool. I remember the Joker was dead. Right. And Batman, did Batman do it? Right. It's unclear. It, yes. Okay. Yeah. Nailed it. Not a clue. <laughs> oh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Dark Dark Man? Not Dark Man. Dead Man. Dead, dead Man. In it. I'm like Liam Neeson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've never read a Dead Man book. I've only seen him in this book. There you go. It's miraculous. I remember him at all. That's awesome. Uh, he's yeah, very he's striking in, in this. Like, yeah, he's got a very striking. He's gross looking, and he's yep. like haunting. He is haunting. Yeah. By the way, there are supposed to be horror elements to this. Now it's not like your horror like, you know, slasher or like jump scare or like grotesque. He Azrael's idea of horror is like a lingering, unsettling feeling. Mm. That's yeah. what he likes and that's what yeah. he's looking for and that's what you'll probably find in this. Also this book, I want to point it out, this book is drawn by Bermejo. It's also colored by him. Oh. So nice. this is his art 100%. Wow. 
Okay. Which is really important when you're looking at this book, mm. all right? Like, if you're if you're a person who was like, I picked this up, I, I didn't really care, whatever, go back through it, because trust me, I've read this book now four or five times at this point in different, like, you know, either reading the floppies for a show we were doing mm. or whatever, or, like, prepping and then we didn't do it, and then prepping again and then forgetting what I was taught. You know what I mean? Like, and each time I've seen something different in mm. the book. Okay. Nice. All right. So the first issue is basically following on the heels of the end of Joker. The last panel of Joker is the bridge figure falling into the water. Mm -hmm. And seemingly it was like, who is it? Because there's three people on that bridge, right. right? It's Joker, it's Batman, and it's Johnny Frost. And um, a lot of people had different theories on who it could be, right? And in this, it's like, it was the Joker and he falls in the river. Mm -hmm. Batman's in a, an ambulance and he's being rushed to the hospital, right? And seemingly he's bleeding out. I want you to notice, I don't know what the meaning is for this, but I noticed it for the first time last night when I was going over this one more time. The blood coloring that's pouring out of Batman is completely different yeah, than it's anything very else. Flat. And like in every panel where Batman is bleeding out, it's the same way. Huh. And I don't know what the significance is for that, but I feel like it's something. Huh. Like, yeah, it looks like it doesn't belong, like the blood doesn't belong in the world <laughs> of the rest of the art. Right, but like everything else in the image does. Yeah, interesting. Um, Batman is threatened to be unmasked. He fights his way out of the moving ambulance to <laughs> land in Gotham, where he is greeted by Gothamites. <laughs> and um, he's desperate, and he runs down an alleyway to get away from them so that A, no one will find out who he is, and B, he's clearly upset, right? Mm. Well, During, I mean, he's bleeding. He's, ble yeah. he's bleeding out, right? He's been, he's been stabbed, because yeah. the Joker had a knife. And... Yeah, that's, that's a lot of blood. There's a lot, it's a lot of blood. He's been yeah. stabbed a few too many times. Yes. <laughs> um, throughout this, we have a narration. We find out that it's, so we're gonna, let's just, I'm going to say Constantine. We're going to get comments that tell us I'm wrong. Ah. But I have called him Constantine forever. And so it's really hard to break that instead of calling him Constantine. Oh. What? I might also just call him John. It's Yon. Thank you. Yon Constantine. <laughs> John basically begins with like, you know, just random like, you know, things that are opposite one another. Black and white, love and hate, life and death, all that kind of crap. He mentions the killing joke joke. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Talking about like... A fall and such because so it's the killing joke happened in this universe, I guess. I mean, it, ha it doesn't matter. Happened this in the whole real thing universe. is out of continuity, yeah. and right. like it is admittedly so. And Azrael likes that because, as he said in an interview, like his audience is his mom. Okay. Like a person who doesn't know anything about these comics right. and, and doesn't just, need to, and doesn't right. need to, because this story doesn't exist in like yeah. Batman's eighty years of comics. You know what right. I mean? It just, just doesn't matter. It's just, have you heard of Batman? You're good. We kind of get a check in, like a like a remember that like image. Flashback, now yeah. it's like the Batman silhouette falling. Batman calls for Alfred, and he doesn't get an answer. And like we're seeing a flashback to what happened to Batman, and that like as Batman was falling into the river, he comes back up, and like he's desperate for air, and like obviously he's dying, and like he's bleeding out into the water, and he sees his parents, and they're like, hey. Uh we're here for we're you. We're still alive. It's cool. Like, Join us, Bruce. Yeah. yeah. Come on over. <laughs> Swim on over. <laughs> Batman is like calling for Alfred now, not only on communicator, but like also like like in person because he sees someone coming down the alleyway and it, it's Constantine and he's just like, hey, it's me. I'm, I'm like to us. Right. Like, John's like, hi, it's me. It's I'm not here. who you think it is. I'm in Gotham. It's not Alfred. Yeah, it's not Alfred. <laughs> it's um, just a different Brit. Yeah. So like John's like, hey, like, like the butler took the night off, but hey, don't worry. I'm here. Is that Butler something? took You're... the night off. He... How would he know? He's just, he's, that's who John uh, that's is. That's just a thing to John's say. John's just yeah. a, like, a, he's an asshole. Like, yeah. he's just an asshole. <laughs> Batman kind of blacks out, and, like, we see a memory of, like, Bruce as a young boy at a playground, and his parents are there. There's, like, a little picnic going on, and, like, as Bruce is going around, one of those, like, really like, super awesome and dangerous merry-around things, you know mm. what I mean? Like, like, you can push. Oh, yeah, you get your foot caught in it. And yeah, or, like, you go really, really off. fast, and, like, yeah. you know. It'll throw you off. Yeah, yeah, or you throw up. Martha is looking at um, Thomas, who is looking at another lady, mm. and then, like, Bruce also oh, notices yeah. behind a tree, there's a creepy-looking woman who is the Enchantress. Yeah. And then he falls or flings himself off of the merry-go-round, right? The Enchantress offers, like, you know, um, offers who she is by not giving him any information. Hmm. Like, I am places, I am times, I am at once, that kind of stuff, right? Right. Um, Batman wakes okay. up. 
he's in a room, he doesn't know where he is, there's all these like crazy markings all over the place, like obviously like pentagram looking things and other magical yeah. sigils. Yeah. Um, he looks at him his body and like there's rips in his suit but there's no stab wounds. He comes out into the next room where John's watching TV and like John's like, hey, let's just skip to the end of like trying to pretend that like, you know, you don't know who I am, <laughs> but like I know you know who I am to some degree and I know who you are, so let's just move past that and like I will try to fill in the blanks and let t the TV finish it up because he's watching the news. Mm. So he's just like, cool, we know his dead man's there. Well, and John can see him. Mm. Um, there's like been a body discovered in the Gotham River and it turns out it's the body of the Joker. Right. And like, Batman's like, what happened tonight? He's like, that's a good question. What did happen tonight, yeah. Batman? Well, you tell me. You were on the bridge. Yeah, the question <laughs> is, who killed the Joker? Right. Right? So, so I'm a little confused. Both the Joker and Batman fell off the bridge? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then Batman takes off into Gotham in classic Batman yeah. form. He just <laughs> off of, Literally off of car <laughs> Yeah, sweet. It's a really cool transition because it's Batman like diving down as though he's like going to like, you know, glide away into Gotham and then turns into young Bruce spitting off of a bridge. <laughs> a bridge. We're back to the bridge thing, yep. right? Yep. Thomas is on the bridge with not Martha mm. and like she clearly wants to move their relationship along a little bit and he's mm -hmm. like, my son's right here. I can't do that right now. Right. And he's like, dad, like I, I, I spit off the bridge and it took this long and like, isn't that cool? And like, <laughs> His, he's like, hey, son, that's great. Here, take this penny and let them race and see, like, let me know what happens, okay. right? The penny falls a little further off the bridge. Bruce just goes to grab it and he's saved by his dad, right? And then, like, we see that Batman's now on the bridge. Like, it, it must be the same bridge he has, like, he's having that memory yeah, of his interaction there. Yeah. And, like, we see, like, a GCPD, like, crime scene, right? Where, like, there is the body of um, Johnny Frost that they found. Johnny Frost is also dead? Yeah. Joker dies, Johnny Frost dies. Clearly yeah. Batman did it. He's the only one alive. <laughs> he killed everyone. Yeah. But once he killed Joker, he was yeah. like, you know what? Uh, you too. Yeah. No witnesses. <laughs> and uh, I'll throw them off the scent, stab myself. Ow. Oh, that hurts. Why oh, would I do that? God. It's fine. It's fine. Um, there is one witness. So obviously Batman's got to take care of him now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, like, basically, he's trying to give it his, like, you know, like, what he saw, essentially. And, like, mm. Gordon's not listening. Like, he's just like, uh-huh. Because he sounds like a lunatic. He's he looks like he's raving. He's homeless. Yeah. And, like, yeah. So Gordon's like, uh-huh. He sure. also looks like he's dripping with algae. Yeah. <laughs> he's drawn grossly. Well. Like, he lives underwater. Well, okay. And came up so, to treat with the land dwellers. First of all, let's acknowledge the fact that, like, Bermejo's art is spectacular, but it also doesn't hide behind the conventions of making everyone beautiful in your comic. Mm. You know, because right. like this guy's not supposed to be. Yeah. Right, he you know looks I mean? gross. Look at his fingernails. Yeah, so like even in his in the grotesque like visage of this gentleman, like there's something incredibly beautiful about the way he's rendered. Mm. It's just awesome. It's just really cool looking. Gordon heads back to his car. The guy catches up to him. And he's like, "I don't you understand? I saw him. I saw the devil kill him." Right. Gordon's like, you know, doesn't believe me. He's like, why don't you believe me? He's like, because I believe in him. And like, we see Batman's cape. Mm. And then like, he's like, see you later. Godspeed to you. And like, mm -hmm. the guy makes a run for it. Gordon knows that this dude's going to get interrogated. He no. catches up with him. <laughs> or he's like, I don't have to interrogate you. The Batman. Yeah. yeah. Batman loses him as he goes over this like wooden wall that goes into a train tunnel. This is an opportunity. I'm sure everyone who's read this already noticed it, but there is a face in, in the fog oh, of yeah. the tunnel. Oh, yeah. Which barely there, but it is there, and it's not one of those things where your brain's making it. Like it's right. it's, it's, it's intentional. It's intentional, and it's put there. Okay. Right, because like the tunnel says, "I know what you did." Oh. Then we get to the part that everybody knows. Batman <laughs> returns back to the Batcave, where he begins having his computer run scans on his body, um, to see like how he's doing, like because it's magic. Batman hates dealing with magic. Yeah. Especially like, in this universe, it, he's like, "It's magic. stupid, and I don't like it, and I don't have control over it, yeah. and I'm not an expert in it." It's yeah. not science. Yeah. And I hate it. And like asks like you know if he has any like you know joint trauma or, or or you know scar tissue or wounds or anything like that and like the computer's like nothing, and he's just like that's bullshit. Mm. So he takes off the bat suit, and like he's Begs walking. It's a question of whether he was ever actually stabbed in the first place. Right. Well, magic can, magic can do that too. Right. Though. But the so, blood also didn't. Right. It also looks weird. Exactly. So that's interesting. So mm. we got the the infamous panel. Um, in everyone's copies at this point, unless you have yours that is obviously bagged and boarded in some way, shape, or form and put away. Batman strides off 
to find a whole bunch of different bat suits, um, a costume that he's going to put on in about a moment. When he turns back around, he sees the bat suit again as he's asking them to check again about the bodies that were found this evening. Because mm -hmm. it's like the body that was on the bridge has been taken to the morgue. The body that was retrieved in the river is currently missing. So mm -hmm. the Joker's body. Right. So Batman's right. like... It's already gone. <laughs> right. What? Like, son of a bitch. Like... <laughs> It would fetch a very high price right. on the black market. But it's like, even when I win, I can't win. Yeah. Um, he then turns around and he sees his suit lunge for him. Yeah, that's not good. I like that it looks like chain mail. Right? It's cool. It is a cool suit. It's very different. He collapses to the floor in like a near fetal position. Yeah. We will talk about the controversy, but I will, say, I will echo myself from when we did this discussion. There's a difference between being naked and being nude. He is nude here when he steps out of the Batmobile where he is not wearing any clothing, but he is empowered and like he strides off and he is naked when he is collapsed on the floor because he is vulnerable. And he's stripped away, not right? because of clothes, but because of everything. Well, that's just in art. That is how it has been shown. Like mm -hmm. you can have a woman who is nude, but like she's in control of it. You can have a, a, a figure that is naked when they are vulnerable. And at times it doesn't even have to be when you're unclothed, but typically it is. But, like, it's a way in depicting things. We don't even see anything here. Mm -hmm. And that's where he's naked. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. That's why it was important. Bruce puts on a disguise. He goes to a back alley because he's trying to find the homeless person. He runs into a woman who is wearing fishnets and a top hat. And she's <laughs> doing card tricks and, like, you know, where's the lady? Where's the lady? Find the lady. Uh, she's obviously taking these gentlemen for all that they're worth because yeah. she has real magic because it's clearly Zatanna. Yeah. Um, Batman's kind of listening in. Dead Man shows up. In this universe, Dead Man can inhabit the bodies of others like usual, but only for a very brief amount of time. And then, like, they end up with, like, food poisoning almost. Like, they feel really horrible and sick uh, and he's expelled yeah. from the body, basically. Okay. Yeah. So, like, he shows up and he's just like, hey, 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 like, you know, I'm here. What's up? Anyway, like, we got some shit to do. Like, there's a conspiracy afoot. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. And then, like, he gets pulled out and, like, can't finish his conversation. He, and he goes into the body of a dog, which is useless. <laughs> yeah. Right? Just... Yeah. Yeah. So, um, basically, uh, in disguise, Bruce ends up asking uh, Zatanna if they can help or if, he, if she can help him. Like, she's looking for a specific person. Like, you've seen this guy. Yeah. Like, this, like he tries to describe because he's, he's looking for anyone who might have run into this homeless dude. Right. And does he... He doesn't know who Zatanna is, I guess, at this point. No. Right, she's an unknown seemingly, character. Seemingly, in this universe yes, right now. or maybe he does. I don't know because, mm. like, she indicates that, like, she goes, like, "Oh, is this your friend?" And like, she pulls up the Joker mm. card. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Like, right, maybe so. it's the fact that he's trying to be in disguise, so he's not he like Zatanna. To... It's me. It's yeah. Bruce. Hey, right. what's up? Tell me, help me out here. We get the classic like Batman again, nude in the study of of Wayne Manor or the parlor or the I, listen i only have very few rooms in my house and like they're like it's like the living room <laughs> yeah, the kitchen uh, the bedroom so like it's a house that it's a room that that none of us have yeah, yeah. And like, so like i don't know <laughs> the this, drawing room there's like a there's like literally a stairwell yeah this it, room is probably bigger than he anything he clearly doesn't I, use it he's got uh yeah. cloth draped over the yeah, furniture is, to keep dust from getting on okay it. that is alfred doing that that is well, he's like you are never in here that's for when they have company yeah you don't, we don't go in this room right there is a stag head over the fireplace with a picture of awesome. his mom above it. Oh, his it. mom. I was going to say that was Bruce, but yeah. No, that, that was from Bruce's long-haired years. Um, <laughs> so then we have another memory. You know, it, it's Bruce in bed being visited by the Enchantress and like being like, let's make a, let's make a deal, you and mm. me. Let's make a deal. Like, come on. Like, give me your tears. And like, <laughs> I... I, I <laughs> Give me your tears, and then she holds a bat up to his chest. Right. And it's a really cool image. Like, it's yeah. just a really well-rendered bat. The whole thing is just spectacular. It looks like a very real bat. Yeah, and so he wakes up, he's like, holy crap! The hell was that? Right. Like, he's having these, like, memory dreams, and it's like, what's... And was what's that really a real what memory? Yeah. Or is that yeah. something well, else? Because he's sleeping, so it's he like, wakes up, he's like... Is that why I'm Batman? Just yeah. fucking a chance just held a bat up to my chest? Yeah. Like, or could it be the fact that, like, his dreams or his memories are being invaded by right, magic? by some right? magic force. So... Batman goes to a church where he runs into Constantine, who is like, so Joker's dead, like, but maybe he's not. Because then they look up and there is the crucifix and the face has been painted like the Joker. Right. And so Batman's like, 
That and seems like the Joker would do that. That mm, he can't do that if he's dead. Right. Right. Also, um, there's no body. Yeah, there's no body. No body, no death. Right. It's like soap opera 101. We see that bat image again, this time stapled to the chest of a person. Ugh. It's cool looking yeah. and horrible. Again, it's that unsettling style horror because it's like, part of you can kind of feel that. Like, what that yeah. might. We've all accidentally stapled our fingers. Right. I never accidentally stapled a bat. No. To really. you, no. One time I stepped on a rug staple. Ooh. Ooh. When I was a little girl. Those and are it, salad. And it stapled my sock to my foot. Oh. And we had to go to the hospital to have it removed. Yikes. <laughs> So basically, John and and Batman are trying to put together how they're going to figure this whole thing out. Because it's like, John's like, this is a mess. Like, and like, the cops aren't going to be able to figure this out, obviously. No, they lost the body. They lost, so. they don't know anything. They're, they're not going to be able to solve this. Okay, thing. there is no way the cops want to solve it because it was the body of the Joker. They're like, uh-uh. Nah oh, it, it got lost? It got lost. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't see it. I, 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 um, so basically, like... John feels like, he keeps like, questioning Batman where he's just like, you know, do you feel anything? Like, ever? Like, every once in a while he like, gets in these little, like, pot mm -hmm. shot kind of things, mm -hmm. right? Batman's like, Joker's alive. I realize this now. John's like, I know a guy who owns a nightclub. Go there. So he's like... Oh, I thought you were going to give me, like, a spell or something. Nope. Someone, they might be able to help you there. Is it Papa Midnight? No. Damn it. Have they addressed It's the only why... thing I know from Constantine. <laughs> Have they addressed no. why John is here? Like, what's he, what's his objective? Like, what is he doing in Gotham right now? John goes where he pleases. He's just like, I'm just hanging. Well, so far, okay, so let's not forget. We're going to church. Let's not forget, too, that part of this came out of the fact that this was a Justice League Dark mm. pitch at one point. Right, that's where you get all these. John and Zatanna are on Justice League Dark. Right. Or have been. You know what I mean? Right. So this is, Azarella wanted to put Batman in a story with magic. Mm -hmm. And, you you know, you could have just Zatanna, but, like, you might as well do Constantine because Azarella's well. Azarella also wrote Hellblazer in his past. Oh, uh, okay. So, so he's a very familiar character. Yes. And okay. if you're just like, hey, I know Constantine is in this book and Azarella wrote it, maybe I'll check out his maybe run. Maybe if you like his run or like if you liked his run then from Vertigo, you might check this out and it kind of gives some cred uh, if you liked it. Also at the time, like John hasn't really been like himself in comics because they like put him in the New 52 for a while and like mm. that book was not great. So we have another flashback to... Um, <laughs> Bruce playing, he's going, okay, this is one of those moments where it's like, oh yeah, Bruce was a super rich boy. Mm -hmm. Regardless of this <laughs> being a totally different take on the Waynes, because it's out of continuity, it doesn't right. matter. It right. can be. Bruce is a super rich kid. And so like, he's going on a horseback ride with his dad where he's playing pretend dressed up as a Lone Ranger. Yep. Most doesn't have like kids, a wooden horse. Yeah, or like a stick. A stick with a horse head on it. No, yeah. he's got an actual freaking horse. And he's got and, a, and the costume. And the costume and the, and the belt costume. and like the gun, the whole thing, right? Yep. Tell awesome. me his dad is not Tonto. Well, he doesn't. He's not anything because he's leaving. <laughs> oh. Like oh. for good. For good. Yeah, because what? Martha has had enough of his affairs. Right. So she kicked him out. So she's kicking. Oh, she's like, get the hell out of here. And he's like, how about this? Try this one on for size. Don't be here when I get back. Oh. And she's like, if you think you're getting this house, you're out of your mind. <laughs> right. Right? Like, it, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. And so then, like, Bruce blames his mother for his dad leaving. Right. Because that's all, like, that's what he sees. Right. He's like, it's your fault. I'm not going to get to play. And you chase dad away. Okay. So he follows his mother into the study where he takes his, like, pop gun and he puts it to her head. And she turns around crying and is like why like as she drops a photo of, her, of like the family mm. right and then she grabs him by the face and is like promise you you'll never use a gun ever again that's wow. cool right interesting so then we cut to bruce at or batman batman <laughs> no. at the club at the cavern right <laughs> That's the name of the club. Not the coven. Nope, it's the it's cavern. the cavern. And then they he goes downstairs where it's like this like frenzy of like <laughs> sounds that sound like rage, but it's actually just people cheering blood, blood, blood oh, no. because they're calling for Jason Blood, Etrigan. Oh, so Etrigan. I thought it was going to be a bloodbath. No, <laughs> no, it's this universe. I mean, it's going to be. It's Etrigan, <laughs> and Etrigan shows up, and instead of being the like iambic pentameter spewing demon right etrigan is a magical being that raps that's an interesting 
way to okay. take what he does and fit it into <laughs> this language crazy ass universe. This universe. So Batman takes out the bouncer. It just seems just like, cause. Just, yeah. I mean, like he's like, I gotta get in. Yeah, and, and I don't he want wouldn't you let me in. Anybody if if you coming. are a bouncer and you see Batman coming at you, you step aside, man. <laughs> right. Crowd parts. Batman comes in. Etrick and faces Batman, and like just like literally um, is able to take his like rhymes into like what Batman like the having Batman there. It's kind of right. Cool. He's freestyling. He's freestyling, <laughs> and it's cool. Like it's fun. Yeah. And uh, does Etrick have powers? Yes. Okay. So. Yes and no. Yes. I'm going to say yes. He easily does. He does. Mm. Yes. Yes. It's magic. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> it's, but it's not, it's not like... Can he like, can he like throw balls hang of fire Yeah, it's and not crap? like that. It's kind okay. of more like... Well, he can. can he, he can burn Hadouken? you, but it's with his words. No, it's more like Saruman and Gandalf. <laughs> oh, okay. It's like a more subtle... Yeah, it's there. Magic, yeah. But, um, so basically like Batman threatens him. He's just like, a mutual friend told me that you might know where Joker is. Where is he? Tell me. Mm. And then Batman is like, notices that like... Etrigan has turned the entire crowd on him, and the entire mm. crowd is wield- brandishing weapons. Oh. All at Batman. Because they're here to see a show. Right, well, well presumably... So like, I guess they're all criminals. Presumably, also, Etrigan used magic to sway them to do this. Right, right. So it's a little bit of everything, because then what happens is that, like, Batman's like, yeah, but if they, like, shoot me, they're probably going to hit you as well. Yeah, and then, Especially this guy right here. Yeah, <laughs> and then Batman looks up, and Etrigan's like, but... That's not what they're doing. And then he looks up and they're all have their guns pointed at one another now. Mm. Which is why I'm like, Saruman. Yes, Gandalf that's got to be that's yep. magic. Yep. So. Um, they didn't plan this. No. So like, hey, if Batman ever shows up, let's threaten him, but then threaten each other. Yeah. Yes. And, <laughs> we'll then, and we know that Batman's not down for that. By the way, Lee Bermejo reportedly in an interview was like, I hate drawing guns. Oh, yeah? He doesn't have anything against them necessarily. Right, it's just. He just technically a challenge. Doesn't for him. like drawing them because mm. of the various angles you have to draw them at, how they all look different, and how literally if you're wrong in the size, it immediately looks incorrect. Yeah. I was like, that's really funny because of this page. I was like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. Now yeah, that said, that's a lot of guns to have to draw for it is, like it. Yeah. But that said, Bermejo says that he and Azarello worked on this almost in like a the Marvel method sort of way, where like. Azarello came up with like the plot of how this was going to go and Bermejo really took over with like the art and some of the scripting of it with mm-hmm. like with his art. Okay. So like he might have done this to himself. I don't yeah. Know. He's like, nope, I need to do I it. I need to challenge myself. This to work. Dead man shows up, puts himself in a body. He's like, hey, Batman, I got your back. I'm with you, man. <laughs> I got one guy in he's the crowd. He's like, don't listen to this Satan wannabe. Uh-huh. He's just, you know, he's going to mess with your mind or whatever. And then like, you know, Etrigan's like, get the hell out of here. It doesn't matter because there's a huge boom. Like an uh, earth-shattering boom. No, I like that like, Batman smacks the gun out of Dead Man's it's a hands. Smack. Yeah, he's like, "Hey, no, no guns. We're not using those. We don't use guns." Yeah. And I see what you're saying because in that shot, that gun it's a little, looks wrong. It's a little yeah, wrong. It looks it's a little, a little wrong, funky because it's, it's moving at a weird angle. Yeah. It's hard to draw. But Batman just the have, one. I'm Dead sorry. Dead Man should <laughs> jump around into every person and have them throw the gun away. I'm guessing it takes a little bit more than. You know. yeah, yeah. Plus, like. If they all start getting sick, like Batman might get sick. Or if, if he starts doing that, Etrigan might. Yeah, be like, oh no, Etrigan knows him. he's there. Right. He's like, he's like, I'm not gonna let you just disarm everyone in the crowd. Right. He's gonna take a second. Hang on. Everyone jump, in the, jump, in the jump, crowd jump. spills out into the streets of Gotham, where they see the city is burning. Just huge explosions. Yeah. Just yeah. Boom, 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 boom. And then like Batman is completely torn away from that visual because down the alleyway is the Enchantress who calls him tearless. And, like, beckons him to follow her, basically. And he goes down there and, like... Oh, that's creepy. Yeah, she's real gross she's, looking. She, but she's also different. She's older looking. Basically, she shows up to Batman and says, like, I came to see what you became. Oh, shit. And, and everyone disappears. Mm. Like Yeah, like he's in Silent Hill. Yeah. And <laughs> then, like, she's like, Bruce be dead and never mourned, right? Presumably, like, indicating the transition of, like, Bruce Wayne... To Batman, like right. Batman is is not is right. all you that is left. Bruce Wayne. There's to no become yeah. this, like yeah. as though like she literally hasn't seen him for years, mm. and so like that could also attribute his reaction of being like, oh, sh- right. she's back. She asks him what is left that belongs to her, right? And I then she and then she disappears nope. as like a bunch of the like the guys from inside the club are like, oh, Batman, <laughs> over here, you got to do something. And he's like, you're fine, you're safe here. And then, like, Dead Man's like, dude, we are not safe here because he's here. And then up in the sky, they see the bat signal with Joker teeth in it. Yeesh. 
That is but like creepy. Batman doesn't have time to deal with that because there's literally like people in the buildings as the buildings are burning. They're right. like infernos. And so like Batman like rushes into one of the buildings followed by Dead Man who's in the body of a person. Yeah. Some poor guy. And so then all of a sudden he's like, whoa, I, this is like, this is intense. This feels like. Oh, oh. this I is think pain. the owner of this body might not be happy when right? he gets it back. Yeah. But like Dead Man's kind of like, this is cool. I can feel something. <laughs> So like yeah, Batman, cool. Batman leaves him, and then like is like trying to like, call to everyone on the floor, and is like, "I need you to come out. Don't be afraid. I'll get you out of here." When he finds the homeless guy. Mm, oh, I witness. thought it was gonna be the Joker. The witness, exactly. Now, when I read the first issue of this, I thought I might know who this is. When I read the second issue of this, I still felt like I knew who it was. And by the third, I'm pretty sure I know who this is. <laughs> I think it's the Spectre. Oh, because he does the have hood. A green He's got the green hood, hood and the and the white face. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's supposed to be a magical book. Yeah. Don't at me if I'm wrong. Uh, anyway, like, the Spectre's freaking out, and he's still, like, he's a raving lunatic. Right. Right? And he's just like, I'm not the one who needs to be saved! Ah! <laughs> I wasn't ah. referring to just you! <laughs> he's just like, it's you! You need to be saved! And, well, you know, because you're damned. Right? Mm. So then, like, he tries to get him out of there, and they end up having, like, a bit of a fight. All right. And then, like, part of the building collapses down on Batman, and he's trapped underneath, like, oh, burning debris, where he has another memory. And the memory is him. Could you not? At this moment, no, please, the brain's memories. Like, scumbag brain got, getting right in there with this memory of his mother and he going to this, like, bar where he's like, what are we doing here? Like, what is this place? And she's like, it's the kind of place where you can go shoot, and, like, aliens, and battle aliens, because there's, like, an arcade okay, machine. Yeah, yeah. So she gives him a bunch of money, mm -hmm. and then she goes to have a seat where she's meeting with a private investigator mm. who is, like, showing her all these things that she doesn't want to see. Yeah. Yep. It's at that point that the narration's really cool, and I haven't really touched on the narration because, like, the narration is something I would leave up to you to read. Mm. And when we talk a little more about this later on, we'll bring up some of the points from it, but there's literally no reason that I should spoil any of the narration unless it unless it comes up later on okay. but i will mention this because for bruce john tells us it's the first time that like as a kid you come to realize you're not the center of the universe mm. and that like other people might feel bad and so when he sees his mom crying he's like oh right i'm a jerk mm. i shouldn't have made her feel bad yeah etrigan saves batman pulls him out of the fire john's <laughs> there he's like hey guys <laughs> what's, what's happening and like Batman's like, there was a guy in there and I have to save him. And and, and huh. John's like, you know, seriously? Like, you got to deal with this. Like, the Joker. Right. Like, this is not... Let the fire department deal with the buildings. Right. <laughs> so then we cut to where the bat signal is. And the Joker is there. And the henchmen are there. And there's just, like, haws and just <laughs> firing. Just just a lot of haws. Just hawing and firing. Just, yeah. just And, like, GCPD is below and, like... Gordon is there, and they're like, "Joker, give yourself up." I'm like, no. Nope. Yeah, right. But we've got Joker. The around. <laughs> Prepare to die. <laughs> right. I mean, what are you gonna say? Yeah. Batman shows up, beats the hell out of the henchman, and then gets a bat to the head, and it's revealed that it's Harley Quinn. Mm. It's Harley Quinn dressed up as the Joker. Right. She's and, pick, taking up the mantle of the Joker. Well, she's mad at him. She's like, "You killed him. Mm. You killed Joker." And I knew this was the only way to get you out. Yep. Was by pretending to be him, because you'd be like, "But I killed you." Yeah, and then. It, this this world is dark mm. and then it gets darker <laughs> Batman's like fighting her and he hits her and she stops and she looks at him in the very similar manner which is why again the art to this book is so important mm. of his mother looking back at him oh, crying yeah. but this yep. she says please don't stop hitting me <laughs> uh. because I don't want to live in a world without him mm. like kill me so she's, she's pulled off an extreme attack in order to provoke yep. a yep. death by Batman or by a cop. Or right. Gets also, her. presumably her relationship with Joker was probably pretty messed up. Yeah. I would think. Right? Because he's the Joker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then Batman stops and he's not going to do that. And so she takes out a syringe and she injects him with essentially a roofie and she's going to rape him. What? Yikes. Was that her and plan? When, and when she reveals herself a bit, we see these very extreme scars on her body. It's a Y incision. Yes. Yeah, like she was a cadaver. Yeah. So then, like, she says, 
you killed him, so you need to die. A little death to haunt you. In French? Yep. An orgasm is said to be a little death. Ah. So, then we don't know what happens, but either he kills her or he does something else. Mm. Yeah, he, he, he wakes up. She's also taking easy. off his mask or digging her fingers into his face? Yeah, well, I, seemingly she's trying to either get the mask off or give him a smile. Mm, yeah. He's grabbing her by the neck and she's like grabbing yep. his face yeah, at the and edges like, of the mask. And yep. like, yeah. Okay, well, this is weird. And then we see the enchantress in the puddle. like. Oh, like, like reaching up. Yeah. Yeah, but who is she reaching for? Mm. Yikes. Dark. Yes. <laughs> Um, Batman wakes up in a wooden box underground. Whoa. Okay. Right? Trying to get out. And he's unable to, but luckily Swamp Thing is there. Whoa. And so Swamp Thing gets him out and he's badass looking and it's just Jeebus. really cool looking. That's sweet. Man, he is huge. Excuse me, Swamp Thing could be as big or as small as he would like to be. No, I know. It's, <laughs> it's really awesome to see him it that is. size, especially like tearing up a cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. He talks to him, and it's hilarious because John, like, mentions how slow he is to talk, and immediately that conjures the imagery of, like, an ant. He's, like, <laughs> <laughs> like tree beard. Yeah, and, like, John's yeah. like, okay. But, like, Con or, Swamp Thing mentions that there are, are dark forces at, pl at, at, at play here, that both sides want to claim Batman. Hmm. You know, going back to that whole, like, like, you know, there's a conspiracy, there's something else happening right. here. So, something deeper occurring that's connected right. all this. It's, and it's Batman's just, like... Yeah, Batman's like Batman's like along for the ride in this book. Like, <laughs> and is... that's and that's exactly what Azrael wanted you to feel. Yeah. Batman's always in control. He's like, let's put Batman in a situation where he's so out of his depth. Yeah, all he can do all he can do is react. Other people are taking control. And yeah, he's just trying to 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 keep going. Right. And stay alive. Well, that also very much mirrors his childhood. Like he thought he was in control and he wasn't. Yeah, and there were kind of in a way two forces at play there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when like when. There's like children of divorce. Oftentimes, both parents play against one another in favor right. for the kids because they're in some sort of weird war. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Little do you know, the Enchantress is there to <laughs> snatch your kids away. Right. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Watch out. Um, so, also, another, like, little bit of evidence that, like, Constantine's kind of a dick. Mm -hmm. He's wearing a Zorro mask that he made out of his own tie. <laughs> <sighs> Why, man? But he does say, like, hey, I got your belt back from Harley. Oh, great. Thank you. Well, you got little things in there that you need, right? Right, you got all kinds of things, right? Snacks. Mm -hmm. While they're having a conversation, the Enchantress shows up. Oh. And like Not starts here too. to use the angel statues to fight against them. Oh, jeez. And so they have like a battle, right? It was like, you know, like she's like, you were promised to me. Rawr! Uh. Rawr! So, oh God, was he pledged? Uh, I'm picking up pledged, that he like sold his soul to her or whatever when he was a kid. Right. In some Which I feel like, maybe. by the way, if you do that as a kid, that shouldn't count. No, that's the easiest time to get him. <laughs> that's just, that shouldn't count. That's, that's bullshit. <laughs> Look, he was, he was old enough to, you know, point a gun at the back of his mom's head, even if it was fake. And she's like, well, you're mine now. Nailed it. No. Um, and by the way, we do see like Harley did make Oh, she did smile. cause some scars on some his face. Smile Not just scars. like to his face, to the mask too. Yeah, like she cut into it. Yeah. Her nails be sharp. Yeah, she files them. Um, <laughs> so anyway, Swamp Thing- Is Swamp Thing helping? Yeah, no, he okay. is, but like there's like- there's... I would feel like with Swamp Thing there, these <laughs> He's angels just waiting. would not be a problem. Right? Well, it's like, like oh, we see what it he's goes. fighting the angels. Batman kind of takes off after the Enchantress because uh, he's Batman, he can't help himself, right? Right, right. She like uses magic on him, he falls over. And then, like, Constantine's like, oh, did you hurt her feelings? Like, what, what, what did you do exactly? You didn't do anything. Yeah, why is she doing this? Right? And then, like, Batman, like, tells him to shut the hell up, basically. And, like, mm. Swamp Thing's like, I, I like you. Mm -hmm. I like you. Because, I mean, like, John and, and Swamp Thing have always had, like, a relationship. Like, John premiered in a Swamp Thing book. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so... They're friends. They, they're, they're friends. <laughs> John's constantly <laughs> burning dead leaves in his cigarettes. And Swamp Thing's like, man... That's not cool, man. That's not cool. So anyway, like, Bruce is like, I need answers, John. You, yes. have, you have to help me get answers, like, for real this time. Like, I'm ready to <laughs> embrace magic. Let's do it. Oh. Like, let's not do this whole, like, just, just give me the answer. <laughs> yeah, just tell me. Whammy me. <laughs> yes. 
So then we have that cut, like the, the famous scene where Martha and, and Thomas have taken Bruce to see Zorro, but they're clearly not happy. Right. Yeah. Like they're either trying to make it work for his benefit or they haven't told him that they're getting a divorce they're yet. Like, well, we bought these tickets before everything right. fell apart. I'm not going to not go see this movie. Right. But assuming, like, the, the flashbacks are all sequential. Like, they happen in order. Seemingly. Well, they, 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 this at least has got to be the last one, right? Yes. This is, this is kind of the end of the flashback. Yeah, it's the end of the road for the parents there. So in this universe, though, the Enchantress beckons Bruce down the alleyway oh. where they will die. And so they chase after him. Right. So he goes into the alley because he sees her the and yeah. they go there because they're they're chasing after they're him. They're chasing him. We cut so to it's his fault. Yeah, <laughs> it's always his fault. Always he his wanted fault, to see the movie. He yeah. wanted to, you know. Yeah, but no, it's really he now went it's into really... a dark alley. He also yeah. told his mom to wear those pearls. Yes, exactly. They look really nice on you. <laughs> All right, come on, fix yourself up, ma. When did head back? Oh my God. They go to a bar that can only be found if you are looking for it, oh, essentially. And when okay. they get there, like there's a bunch of individuals there and Zatanna's putting on a little show. As she's upgraded from her uh, street, street outfit. This is much more of what, when people think of Zatanna, this is yeah. what they think of. Yeah. Except they added like a thong to the back of it. Um, mm. For those who are counting and were looking, <laughs> there it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, wow. <laughs> The page was curved in oh, such a way I could not oh, see. Sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah. I want yeah. you. I want you to have that opportunity. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that. And she's really well rendered. Let's not lie. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> well, well, is well rendered. Well, she. Well, that's what it, when you when you paint something, it's, you're rendering it. Mm. You know what I mean. And so that that is what has happened here. Like Bermejo's characters not only have a certain life to them and like realism to them, but they all have a weight to them as mm. well. And like, what is being shown here is like really well done. Yeah. So anyway. The plan is that like, like Zatanna is going to use her magic to help Bruce get the answers he needs by talking to the spirits. Mm -hmm. Dead man. Oh, cool! It's not John doing it. No, John's like, oh, I'll bring you there. No, you can use her. Um, dead man shows up, goes into the body of another person, and is like, hey, like if you want to talk to someone who's dead, have it you talk to me. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Constantine's like, could you? Can could, you help me? Z, could you just? <laughs> Do so, you know what any of the answers are? Right? No. No. So get the hell out of here. <laughs> John has Zatanna may force his spirit into like a different body, which is a rat, so he'll shut the hell up. Uh -huh. And then like Zatanna has this moment where she's like, I don't know if this is a good idea, John. Mm. And he's just like, listen, like it's what we have to do now. <laughs> it's not about if it's a good idea or not. Batman's telling us to do it. <laughs> yeah, and then he puts his hand to her cheek and says like, I don't want to hurt. And Batman's like, are you threatening her? Oh. And he's like, no, 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 no. So then uh she starts doing like this like, essentially like seance let's say okay. and it's like really well done because it's really creepy looking yeah especially here jeez where like it's just really neat and so like obviously all of Satana's spells are said backwards yeah and so like she calls a spirit to her like like a spirit that you know needs to be brave and to show up and it's the spirit of Bruce Wayne as a little boy okay what? and like Batman's like this but is, I'm not dead. You're is, supposed to be in me. This is not helping me right now. Yeah. You're not helping me, everyone. Aren't I? Let's just talk to the Joker. Mm. Or my parents. Or, or like, I guess Johnny Frost. Like, anyone who died who might have an answer. Right. And then basically... They're like, we're not trying to solve that murder. Well, we're, we're going to help you solve something. Mm. So then Bruce's seemingly spirit, like, exits his body, and they go into his memories, and John's there, and they're in the alleyway. And, like... Bruce is like, I really don't want to do this. Oh, okay. good. Dead man's there. Dead man's there as a yeah, rat. As a rat. Awesome. He's like, I shot them. <laughs> um, and we see a much older, decayed, haggish looking version oh. of the Enchantress clutching presumably the body of a dead young Bruce Wayne. Batman seemingly doesn't even pay attention to that because all you can see is his dead parents, right. right? And like, she's like, you know, you have to pay with tears in order to be fearless. Okay. Right? And then the rat lunges at, or like bites her on the foot. Huh. And then John picks up the gun and shoots her. This is baller, in my opinion, because <laughs> in the Blams, in the onomatopoeia, are the images of her being shot, which mimic the very standard looking version of Martha being shot, where the necklace breaks and her mm. necklace, like she's wearing the necklace with all the moons and stuff, it breaks in a similar fashion yeah. and she becomes bats. She explodes into bats. And I'm like, that's just really cool and I really like it. I love that kind of symmetry. Yeah. You know, it's like this evil messed up version of that killing, yeah. right? 
with the same gun. Right? And then John's like, cool. And like, Bruce You're telling like, me we don't see who shoots the Waynes? No, because that's not important. No. It's never important. Except in Depends stories on where who they, you ask. <laughs> it's not important to me, and it's not important in the story. Right. I, I assume Crime somehow it was them. tied Crime. in. Crime. Negative. No. No. Nope, not tied in at all. Okay. So then Bruce, or Batman's looking down and is like, okay, I'm dead. Right. And like John's like, pull together, mate. That's not you, that's your past. What? And you have to let it go. It's magic, Bruce. It's not all cut and dry. This isn't like a time machine. Uh, like. Right. You're saying we're not actually here? What am I, metaphorically dead? Right? So he's just like, you have to leave this behind you. Well, in Bruce order... died that day. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And he's like, so you, he's like, I know it's hard to do, but you got to let it go. All right? He's like, listen, maybe you did die in the alley. It doesn't matter. Maybe this is hell. But like, you got to move on. <laughs> Right? And right. so then, like, Batman's like, okay, I have to go someplace I should have gone a really long time ago, and it's to the Gotham City morgue, or the, the GCPD morgue. Okay. So they go there, and John's like, I can't go with you any further. This is where we have to say our goodbyes, but we're not good at those, so later, I won't be in the book anymore. I will still narrate. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to be in your story. I'm still going to be in their story. Yeah. And so... Batman goes into the morgue where when he gets there, we see the homeless individual who I'm calling the Spectre there. And he's just like, cool, you fought like hell for your soul. But like, now you stand before me in judgment. What'd you do? Batman's mm. like, I know what I didn't do. And I know I didn't hold back when I beat the Joker. Mm. When I started punching him as he was stabbing me, I didn't hold back because I knew I was going to die. Then we see the rest of what would, would have been seen in Joker, mm -hmm. which is that Joker stumbles over the body of Johnny Frost and begins to fall off of the bridge. And he catches himself on a ledge and he's hanging there. And Batman goes, I couldn't help myself and I immediately reacted to help him, but I realized I was going to die and I closed my fist and didn't. Oh, wow. And so he fell. Oh, shit. And he's That's just, crazy. And so... He was like, because when I was gone, I was afraid of what he would do. Right. And so the like, Spectre's- Like, if I'm going to die, like, I can't let there I be can't, a Joker. I can't leave him here. Right. And so, like, the Spectre's like, and so now you must pay for your crime. And he's like, aren't, isn't that a little harsh? Yeah. And it's the Joker! And he's, and he's, and he's I like, didn't kill him. I just didn't save him. <laughs> and, like, and then he's like, yeah, but, like, is it any harsher than you? And so then Batman mm. opens the drawer of one of the bodies, like the little cabinet thing, and pulls mm -hmm. it out, and he looks under the sheet, and he goes- I wish you were still alive. And then he, his spirit goes into the drawer and it slams shut. And we go back to the bridge. We see the, the image again with the fall. And we have Constantine's narration. And the body falls into the river. And a hand bursts out of the water. And the Joker climbs out. Oh, wow. And then the heartbeat that we saw throughout becomes Haas. What? Okay. So... This book is very open to interpretation. And I've had a lot of different theories on it. Hmm. And the one I currently like, after having read it a couple times recently, mm -hmm. is that Batman is dead, obviously, throughout this entire yeah. book, except for at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. And John Constantine is either hanging on to him because there is a point in his narration, way early on, that you, like the, in the first issue, where he says he should be get, he should be dead, backbroken, the very least, but the least he's never been. He's the best. To hell with the lad from Krypton. Constantine seemingly has a respect for Batman, mm. right? Yeah, right. And so like he's either there because he's trying to not let him leave, or he's guiding him to a piece that he needs. Right. Mm. And my theory is that this Gotham that we're seeing here is like a purgatory that's playing out. And not that everyone there is dead necessarily. But these are just part of his purgatory. It's either part of his or part of others because the fact is we see Harley Quinn with a Y incision as though she's been through an autopsy. Right. And it's the idea Harley Quinn is dead. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. upon the Joker dying, she killed herself possibly. Mm. I don't know. But the ending, let's talk about that because this is cool. This is cool for a lot of reasons. These four panels are a recreation of the killing joke, which is mm -hmm. referenced at the beginning. Yeah. It's the recreation of the birth of the Joker. 
right? Yeah. Which to a lot of people was like, why are we referencing that? What does that mean? By the way, let's point out really quickly the brilliance of Bermejo's art. Because in the original panel of the Joker clasping his head and laughing, the background's filled with haws, mm -hmm. and he's subtly recreated it in the lights of the city behind him. Yeah. <laughs> That's really it is, nice. It is just, it's just barely there, and yeah. it is so amazing. That is very cool. Right? Like, it's just so cool. What does this mean? Why is this here? Why do we reference the killing joke at the beginning? My theory is, is that it's, it's, like, it's like poetry at rhyme. <laughs> Because no. I think, no, hang on, I think. <laughs> Just don't say that. Well, but but it's, it's true, though, because I think that, I think Batman might have fallen. Mm -hmm. Or even if he didn't fall, he ended up in an ambulance. Mm -hmm. And I think he did die in the alley. And I think that Batman was born in an alley, and he died in an alley. And I think the Joker was born from a fall, and he died from a fall. Mm. And I think the Joker at the end of this is waking up in the same purgatory and is about to go on a different journey. Yeah. Hmm. I can see that. I like that they're not in the same place at the same time. Like if this is purgatory. If that's what it is. If that's what it is. Yeah. It could also be that like Batman, I've seen this on the internet where people are like, well, he wished him to be alive. And so he is now. That's. He wished for him to be alive, right? And like oh, possibly, he does say, I wish he was I wish still he were, alive. I wish right. he was still alive. And so, and and that could be he could be he's wishing for Joker to be alive. It could be he's wishing that Bruce Wayne were. He's just like, right. I wish I had. Yeah, because made... we don't know what we don't. Yeah, see which maybe it's Alfred. Say. We haven't seen Alfred the whole book. Right, and that is another thing. Like that's part of the reason why I think the purgatory thing might be accurate. I don't know because mm -hmm. of the fact that like Alfred never responds to him and he never talks to Alfred. He sees Jim, but he never talks to Jim. Yeah. He only interacts with people who are possibly dead right. or people who are magical. Right. Yeah. So what is your interpretation of Enchantress's role in the book? So I think that she is meant to be like the darkness that Batman ascribes to himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That like, even if Batman doesn't believe in the supernatural, I don't think that the Enchantress is actually someone he made a deal with. I think right. it's what he perceives he gave up to become Batman. Mm -hmm. And so he ascribed a being to it. Yeah, he picked Enchantress in his. In this, in this he may not even know who that is. In. Like that's yeah. just what that's what she looks like. Or but that's in a what way, it looks like like it's the fact that he can't be a man anymore. He has to be Batman. It has to be something different. Mm -hmm. But that's why, like, I think that like this, you know, he's dead here because Bruce Wayne died here, and that's why they wanted to show us that Bruce Wayne died in the alley. Batman was born moving forward. Right. I mean, could it be that he's just been the dead the whole time and the Joker, like Joker's, you know, not real and the Joker book isn't real? Sure, but that's bullshit. Yeah, that, that, that would be sense. very well, weird. Then, well, then who's the guy dressed in the bat costume running around that everyone's talking about? Well, no, no, none of it's real. None of it's real. None of it's real. None so of it's real. when he died as a child in the alley, he had this entire like yeah. life as Batman yep. played out, yep. but none of it that's was real I don't because he ridiculous. never gave it up. Yeah, I don't like no. that. Batman is real. Yeah. No, this like, is like he metaphorically died. He metaphorically died We're in the alley. We're seeing a representation of... Of the... Of what? what of the death yeah. of, of Bruce Wayne. Yes, and, and the, Enchantress gets to keep Bruce Wayne. Well, yes, yeah. but like, she's also the... Like, her whole thing is that, like, if you want to be fearless, which in theory is what Batman is, you cannot have emotion anymore. Right. And so it's like she represents the closing off of him. Yeah, well, he, he he doesn't get to cry. He doesn't get to mourn his parents. No. no he never moves on. Nope. He never mourns. And he's, he's and all he, business all the time. Yeah, he's just completely <laughs> invested in the mission. Right, which is why, like, when we talked originally about this first issue and, it, like, and the nudity scene in it mm. and, like, what it could possibly symbolize, like, we talked about how, like, Batman, while being a man, is, like, kind of not... Like, mm. he's something beyond a human. And so, like, him being nude, he's just like, that's just what I do. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm not connected to humanity anymore, mm -hmm. in a way. And, like, that might, they might want to emphasize that here if Enchantress is supposed to, like, represent that severing from human emotion mm -hmm. that he would have, you yeah. know? Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Also, the fact that the suit goes after him. Like, no, I control that, you. Batman won't let you go. Like, Batman can't let him die. Mm. And, like, I, I like that's why I'm like, I think John, while he does want to hang on to him, is kind of like, we have to help him. And so, like, when, like, Zatanna's like, I, you know, doesn't want to do it, and John's like, I don't want to hurt, I don't think he's going to say her. Mm. I think he's, does, he's saying him. 
like mm -hmm. Bruce. I don't want to hurt him. This is the only way to help him. Right. Because he'll never stop. He'll never let this go. Yeah, he'll, he'll never, always be stuck in this. And he'll never have peace. Right. Because John does mention a lot about, like, you know, the Almighty and, like, you know, he like, these forces are brought up often in here without necessarily giving representation. The specter can be the spirit of vengeance. He could be used as, like, you know, he who will judge you at the end. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's why I think that that individual is the specter. Yeah. Dead man seemingly is there because he also knows that Bruce is dead and is trying to maybe rush him along and like tell him too quickly and John doesn't want that. He's often cut off just as he seemingly is going to tell him something. Ah, interesting. Right, and that's why like John wants to, to get rid of him, right? Like when he talks to Etrigan or when he shows up at the, at the club, at the cavern. Yeah. Yeah. He says like, you know, He'll spout, he'll spout uh, mumbo jumbo and make you never want to. Either that means move on, mm. or I don't. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. And Etrigan says to him, "Get your junky ass above ground." Now you think they're in the cavern, whatever. It it made me more than that. Right. Yeah. Like there's a lot to interpret here, and like people can read into it as much as they want. Mm -hmm. This is either a story that by the end you're very confused. And I, I saw a lot of people talking about that, how like this book was kind of confusing for them. Because if you're not expecting something so supernatural or like open-ended, yeah. this this is going to lead you astray. Because you're like, you think you're on a detective mission, which you kind of are. And like, maybe that's what John was also giving him, that last detective case. case. Right. Yeah. Like, it's his own His own realization of, yeah, of what happened to him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, multiple characters say, I know what you did. And it's it's interesting because I, in the flashbacks, was interpreting that as something he did in his past. Right. When his parents were fighting and we and mm -hmm. uh, he's talking to the Enchantress and seemingly promised her something or gave her something. Right. But then you find out at the end, like, no, they're probably referencing, I know that you let the Joker die. Right. And and by I know, it's more like something inside of Bruce yes. knows. Yeah. But doesn't want to admit it. Yeah. And or like, like, if he's in hell, like God knows. Right. Or like, exactly. You, know, you can't escape like what happened. Or if this is his purgatory and the people are saying it to him, it's his own subconscious telling him. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, I know what you did, and you have to come to terms with what you did. Yeah, you have right. to face it. You can't pretend like it didn't happen. So Cause he's, in this story, he's like, what happened to the Joker? I got to figure out what happened. It's like, you know what happened to the Joker. Yeah. You have to face what yeah. you did. Yeah, what what happened? Where, I don't understand. Like, you know, his body was there. Like, who killed him? Whatever. And it's like, there were three people on that bridge, and only one person could kill him. Right. Come on, man. Yeah. You know who it was. And even at the end of the day, he didn't, but... In right. his own rules, right. he did. He did, yeah. I mean, he kind of did. Yeah, he literally, like... If I, he hadn't been there, the Joker would still be alive. But, like, I... <laughs> and he punched the Joker, and the yes. Joker fell over the body, and then Joker fell, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah it was directly trip, a result of... But, yeah, and I love, like, this image of him with his hand out, but that clenched fist is just yeah. so... It's, like, terrifying. Like, Batman, like, obviously we've seen Batman punch people and whatever, but, like, that's Batman refusing to help someone. Mm -hmm. And again, we see that blood. Yeah. And this is an interesting thing about that, and I don't know if this is just how it was printed or anything, but the blood over here is vibrant. Yeah. Like, it's brighter. And when he closes his fist, the dark, the blood just gets darker. Right. It's still flat, but it's not the same shade. No, it's not. And, and it could yeah. be a print, I don't know, because it's, it's here as well. Yeah. Um... I do know that the art for Joker was a little different. Mm. And so it could be something that's bridging the gap. Because, like, Bermeo drew that, but he didn't color it. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I, it, it could be that it's flat just because of that. I, I don't said, know. I thought he did color it. He colored this, not oh, Joker. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. And so, like, yeah. yeah, like, I don't know bridging if, like, the, he's trying to do that. But, like, that's such there. a specific element that I feel like there's something more there. Yeah. Um, the other question is, what is his punishment? What is Batman's punishment? Does Batman just go to hell and we, that's the end of it? Or is Batman not allowed to quit and Batman goes back? Yeah, does he does he friggin' climb out of the morgue after this? Like I don't know. Well, because if, if this if the question is, is this morgue real? Right, or is this like more of a metaphorical well, morgue? Yeah. He goes into the maybe into the, the tray here and then he wakes up and he's like in the back cave and Alfred's tending yeah. to his wounds or whatever. What happens with Enchantress? I mean if she is shot by Constantine and she no longer has control over what Bruce Wayne gave up, 
what would he go back as? Is he a different Batman now? Well, that's just, like, the question is, like, is the Enchantress real? Like, if she's not real and it's just something that he felt like he gave up to become Batman. I mean, he's still Batman. He's still, you know, he still has the training and he still has, like, the the Mm know-how. But maybe he's not so uptight. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, maybe... (sighs) Maybe being able to let go of this guilt changes him as who he is, like, what his drive is. And maybe he's not quite as good, but he's still Batman to some degree. I I don't know. Yeah, or maybe, maybe if he does wake up because he went through this experience and Constantine was there to help him and shoots Enchantress, it's not, none of it's real. It's all like metaphysical or metaphorical, but mm-hmm. that's like helping Batman like conceptualize you can be free of this deal you feel like you made yep. where in order to become this champion, you had to give up like your humanity mm-hmm. and I'm like no you don't I'm, I'm giving it back to you yeah. by defeating this yeah. this thing that your mind has created as the manifestation of that deal you made yeah like it's it's off the deal's off the deal's off wake you're up still Batman. and be you, yeah you could still like you you've always been Batman and stuff but like you don't have to not be a person yeah you get you get to like have that opportunity to to just you know yeah unless he's dead in which case no right and maybe maybe he and and I think maybe he's now going to have the opportunity to make amends, right? Because uh, that's what purgatory is. It's yes. like a way station until where, you figure it out. Yeah, where you you make up for the the sins, yes, uh, of your life. In this case, whether well, the Joker die, right? So and and so maybe at the end of this, that's what happens. Yeah, he gets to move on, and now we, like you said, we get to see what what the Joker what the Joker is going to yeah. Like what what through. do you get to see? Yeah, like what do you, what do you get because. That, that would be an interesting book. Right. And the Joker like, going through like the same kind of journey. Yeah. And what his his interpretation like. and like who's guiding him. Yeah. I think if we saw it, it would huh. be a little bit too much of an answer as to this book though. Right. Well, in well, theory, okay. But this book, do- well, no, I was going to say this, this book answers what happens in Joker, but it, it does. No, it absolutely does because a lot of people liked that open-ended ending where it's like who fell off the bridge? Was right. it Batman? Was it Joker? Was it, was it, um... John Frost. A lot of people thought it was Frost. Like they were just like, it must be him. And that Batman. Because you can't kill off Batman or the Joker. Well, no, the idea is that like Batman and Joker are these like almost like metaphysical beings who are like constantly locked in battle and will be forever. Mm-hmm. And then this book went ahead and answered that. And like some people were kind of annoyed by that. They were like, I don't want an answer to that. Mm-hmm. But this gives you a whole nother thing. Yeah. And so like, if they did a third one, either it would shed light on this or it wouldn't give you any answers to this and just create other questions. Right. You know what I mean? Because Azarello really, like I said, he really likes the idea that people are interpreting this mm-hmm. if they choose to. Some people just gave up after the first one. You right. know what I mean? I get it. It yeah. wasn't for them. I still highly recommend a read for this because trust me, there's a lot more there. We've all talked about this, but Constantine has the unreliable narrator, mm. right? Like, what can you believe? What could he say? Like, there's like something there where he also mentions where it's just like he wants to put his spin on this story, but he's going to try hard not to in a way that's the writer's struggle. You know what I mean? The mm. writer has to remain true to a character, but they want to put their own spin on it. Mm-hmm. You get to do that in a, in a non, you know, continuity book, but like you still can't help yourself even in continuity right. issues. Like you're going to bring up something more than something else. Yeah. It's kind of cool. There's a you, lot there. You can't not have any continuity because you still have that character. Well, yeah. And like there are certain like, it's just that like Azarello wants the opportunity to provide you something you've never seen before yeah and to some people they're like that's dumb like they didn't like that and i and that's fair if you didn't like it i totally get it some people thought it was trying too hard being like oh you made the waynes not good people like you're trying really hard to like do something totally different you know what he was he was trying to Mm -hmm. give us something different yeah you were skewing something yeah but like like, that's not bad but he wasn't ruining your character because batman still exists over there doing his own thing and this is this universe's batman with his story considering how horrific this universe is (laughs) like it makes sense yeah there's something kind of more human about him here and less heroic yes like he really fulfills that like you know, darker side of, like, the DC pantheon. Mm -hmm. You know, like, Superman is, like, this godlike character, which Constantine does mention him, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a Boy Scout. Well, yeah, and, like... whatever he is. It's mentioned in here at some point that, like, the Earth might need a savior or the world might need a savior, but humanity needs something else. They need something darker. They need the devil. They need fear Mm. in order to be motivated. Fear is the greatest motivator. And so, like, I think, like I said, like, Constantine really is like, you're very effective. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm surprised people didn't like this book because at the, at the end of it, Batman 
kills the Joker or allows the Joker to die, which is what people always say they want. Right. I think it's <laughs> like, just... oh, he did the thing. He killed the Joker. Right? He put an end to the Joker. Is that what you people want? <laughs> no, but I secretly love the Joker. I can't yeah. have Batman well, kill no, him. I mean, like I wanted to like shoot Joker in the face, not like as he was also dying, let the Joker die. That's right. lame. Right. Or it could just be that they also don't like the fact that there's a question of what's real and what's not in this right. book. And like at the end that of the day, like I could reread this later on and be like, okay, no, wait, it's, it's definitely this instead. Because I've already had that several times. I was like, it's definitely yeah. this. Wait, no, it's definitely this. You could you could take it at you get you get the Haas and the uh, yeah. in the you could take it as oh, the Joker survived. Batman, you know, thought that he was letting the yeah. Joker die, but he actually wasn't because Joker fell in the water and then like climbed out of the water. And yeah, Batman's dead and Joker's still and he gets the last right. laugh. It could just symbolize the birth of the Joker and it's the rebirth of him. There he is. Can't help it. He's got to do that and he's right. back and he's alive and and Gotham is screwed. Right. Or it's you know it's the beginning and the end. They they mirror one another. Right. Like. You're you're a literary character. I'm sorry. What do you? Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry that your reality is going to be endless and yeah. tortured. Uh, what? How do you interpret uh, Harley Quinn's appearance in this? Like her look? No, her what? What her role? What she in the does? Book is. So I mean, her role again, or like her role in Batman's journey. Right. So like, there's something there, and like you could say there's something to do with the fact that like a lot of people say there is like some sort of like infatuation the Joker has with Batman and mm -hmm. it's a way if, like if this is all like metaphysical and like supernatural that like she's a manifestation of that because she looks like the Joker she's dressed like him but right. it's a woman and so like who wants to have sex with Batman right. like, and kill him <laughs> so you could say it's that like it's just like a, a, a literary device to show us that right. it could be like I said she's also dead yeah. It would so also she's here too and she's on her own journey because she can't let go and she'll never leave. What yeah. I like about that yeah. is if that's the case, it might be the fact that like a little death for you is like, that's my death. It's insignificant compared to Mr. J. Yeah. But it's another death on your hands. Right. It's just something else because like I couldn't handle what happened and so why off myself? Because yeah. I, I have a feeling if Harley was going out, that would, might be how she did, especially this Harley. Yeah. Who, you know, is also wearing like Dia de los Muertos version of her makeup a yeah. day of the dead yeah like interpretation of what she would normally look like right you know it, it you could go a bunch of ways she could just be out of her mind right it could be that she's alive and if this is all actually happening that like you know those scars were inflicted by the joker and that's messed up yeah yeah but i don't think it's that i really just think that she's dead well, and that Batman is also dead. That yep. this yeah. This place is not real. Nope. Because like they have a, a true interaction. Yeah. Also, if you notice, like her henchmen aren't wearing clown attire; they're wearing yeah. like old timey demon or devil demon masks. Demon masks. Yeah. As it was actually coalescing into what it is, um, Bermejo was living in, in Turin. Turin of the Shroud of Turin. Yes. Okay. Which is a city shrouded in a cult as well, and like mm. he mentions that there's like a, a, a gate to hell that's possibly located in like the Piazza Statuto and um, like I'm like okay like he, we're putting a lot of emphasis on that which is right. why I like you know I, I like my current interpretation of this book yeah. again it could change and like a lot of people have a lot of different versions of this from I didn't like it and it's stupid to mm. like deep dives yeah, and everything in between um, if nothing else I know a lot of people love the art and so, like, I oh, hope yeah. we can all agree that this art is spectacular. Yeah. And there is a lot of symbolism in the art if you choose to look for it. And there's a lot of things you're never going to see rendered in this way ever again. I just noticed when you were flipping through, the bat wing takes on the, the shape, shape of, of the, the heartbeat. The heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this it's... is the heartbeat is another indication that like he's dying. Yep. We're getting. Yeah, like the, it's. The, we're seeing his. But it starts. That's true. It starts flatline. It starts flatline, yeah. which is what I like is meant to, I think, lead you into thinking that Batman didn't die at the beginning. Right. Or maybe maybe his heart had stopped and we're seeing his like uh, mm -hmm. final vision. But then you're getting little blips here like, oh, maybe he's fighting back. Right. Maybe he is going to. He, he's a fighter. He can't help it. it. He yeah. can't let it go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about the controversy around this book. Yeah. The controversy we all know that... This book came out. I feel like we're so far past this at this point. I'm I know, but we have we have yeah. we have to cover That's it. Right. And I know people won't necessarily want to listen to this part because you've all heard it already. But we're yeah. going to talk about it anyway, really briefly. That when the first issue of this launched, literally the series launches. 
<laughs> the whole the whole imprint launches. Like yeah. the Titanic. First one. <laughs> they're like, here it goes! Black label! It's gonna be awesome and create freedom and whoa, I'm sorry, is that Batman's dick? <laughs> there were a lot of things in here that could have been the reason. Like yeah. the fact that there was a crucifix with Joker paint on it. Like people might have taken offense to that. I mean, there's a lot of religious imagery, yes. which some people might have a problem have with. Have a problem with. But they had an issue with seeing Batman's penis. They didn't like yeah. that, and they didn't want it. Was, like everything else can was, be interpretative, but not this. Was Stephen Colbert like the one who was out in front? Because I know it was covered by all the late. Oh no, they people. all talked about it, but like yeah. he definitely he made a video about it, and like like you know ha 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 ha. Right. Like we're laughing about right. it. Right. Which DC did not take well. Especially the new president of DC. You don't laugh at a man's dick. <laughs> well, it's more like okay, don't, Batman. don't call that, attention that, to this that, element of the book, or maybe they wouldn't have even read the book, or heard, or even known about right? that if it wasn't so widely. Like, wait, it, what's in one of our books? What? Yeah. So yes and no. I have a feeling. So like, um, it has to be. Like, come on. So during this time period, DC got a new president, Pam Lifford. Um, Pam basically came like into her office when this came out, mm. like. Right. The very she, she walks in and the, the, her phone's ringing off the and hook and her, her desk is piled up with angry this, letters. Right? This is not her type of thing, seemingly. Mm. And so DC not only will not reprint the original version of this book, mm. any ones that they had left, they quote unquote pulped them. <laughs> they were destroyed. Destroy them. They were destroyed. Wow. Uh, even though pre-orders for the second issue were bigger than the first. Yeah. Which is like, yeah. doesn't usually happen. Yeah. They were like, nope. And they said that they would eventually do a reprint of it. It would be censored. And several things were censored, apparently. Really? But that the second issue and the third issue were delayed heavily mm. because they had to have Bermejo go back and remove more stuff. Really? And Jeez. so we never got to see their true vision for right. this. Right. Right? Release the Bermejo cut! <laughs> I would love. I would honestly love it. The fact is, though, and I would love to get my hands on this, but there is something called an uncorrected advanced reader's proof, right? Mm -hmm. It's a version of the book that goes out there. Um, oftentimes, it doesn't have words in it, but sometimes it does. Mm -hmm. In that DC All Access episode I was talking about earlier, the 2018 one with Didio, he has a copy, and it's the advanced reader's copy. Oh of the book. wow! Hmm. And I'm like, is it in there? Because Jim Lee and Dan DiDio said that, oh, they didn't see it. It must have gotten through proofing. But, like, when it went to print, it was lighter. And that's when we saw it. Uh, huh. Azarello and Bermejo say that's not true. <laughs> and that when, when Bermejo drew that, because in the script, Azarello says that he told um, Bermejo to draw Bruce naked. Mm -hmm. Right? Nude. I say nude. Naked later. Um, and he drew him full on. Like, and he drew him in such a way that it was like, the shadow could be stretched over if they asked for it. Mm -hmm. Like, I can easily fix that. We can right, do that. Right, right. But this is what you got so far. But they didn't. Like, literally, and if you look at the art and how it was edited, it's very obvious, even when you look at the original, that, yeah, it, you could easily just have not, Yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like. There's not a whole lot of altering. Like, he did that because he's like, this may not get through. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, it did. And then all of a sudden they're like, mm, oh, no we, oh we, no, we didn't see that. Oh, we never actually saw it. Oh, we didn't, no, we didn't, we didn't approve that. No, that wasn't us. <laughs> that wasn't us. I wouldn't have approved that. For a lot of people, they didn't want to see it. And I understand that. People were uncomfortable seeing it. They felt like that wasn't necessary. My interpretation was I thought it, I thought it was necessary for what they were trying to get across to us in that sequence. Mm. Like it I certainly has a much bigger impact the original way than it does than again this way, which is like does the trick that you see all the time, where there's shadow hiding parts. Yeah. It's like, well, you would normally see that, but fine, but, but yeah, whatever. But I know that they won't let you, so we, we'll cover it up. And yeah, it's, it's it's very distracting. It is because distracting. you're very aware of like the fact that like you're not allowed to see that. Yeah, it is, and like again, like I still think that it has to do with like showing Batman's true vulnerability. Yes. And that, like, while some people, like, are like, I don't want you to see me naked. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't care. Well, he's in his cave. He's it's in his just cave. just himself. It's his home. It's his home. Again, I think it does emphasize the fact that, like, there is, like, this emotional disconnect for him between himself and the rest of the world mm. to some degree where he's like, there's something wrong here. But he can feel fear. 
Mm -hmm. But like we don't have to see his penis for that to happen. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we That's see it later. That's not what makes him afraid. Right. So like I think, but I understand that people didn't like it. I do struggle with the fact that people were like, Batman is supposed to be for kids. And it's like, you know what? Batman can be for kids. And that's why there's all these goddamn imprints. <laughs> Zoom and ink and like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They're this there. This doesn't have to... Was the killing joke for kids? Was that specifically for them? No. And Look like, at Gordon's daughter be raped. Or not. Or I not, still say or just I, taken, that's an interpretational one but, as well. But either way, either way it's very disturbing not, it's for not, children. Yeah, because that's there's not for photos kids. of her taken it's undressed. It's not for kids. But like the black label books, some people have said like, we didn't know what black label was supposed to be. Read the press releases and read what early Jim Lee and Dan DiDio were saying. And yeah. like it indicates a mature readership. Especially when Black Label launches, eventually Zoom and Ink also launch. And within a mm. few months of them launching, I read, so again, mm. you have to take it from, I'm getting this information from other, other journalists yeah. who say that like there's a chance that like the new president, Lifford, doesn't care for imprints. Mm. And so now we've got Zoom and Ink, which are publishing kids comics and YA graphic novels. And they're going to change all of that and come, I, I believe this has happened now, that in January 2020, they were like, okay, first of all, last year, they shut down Vertigo. Right. Vertigo's not an imprint anymore. Really? Longer. Vertigo, historically where books like this would have lived, yeah. doesn't exist anymore, right? We'll, we'll roll some of those into Black Label. And in fact, Watchmen and Killing Joke ended up with Black Label stickers on them yeah. by the way i struggle with the fact that we can put dr manhattan's dick in a book with a yeah. black label well he's on not it. for children he's always been naked <laughs> yeah nobody cares about him right i know that's i'm the, sorry i'm I mean, sorry that, he's always been new reality is that nobody yeah, cares they don't about, care him. about him they he's care not about gonna batman be on, no one's gonna talk about it right. yeah it was also in a movie yeah yes but so they decide then to take those imprints and shift them again <sighs> and so now we have dc kids DC, DC Black Label. DC Kids is for 13 and under, I think. Hmm. DC is supposed to be for like for 13 and up, except then in the article I read, people were like, excuse me, a lot of your books are for 15 plus because they were like teen plus. Hmm. So they had to like kind of re shift that, those yes. guidelines. And Black Label is for mature readership 17 plus, where it's graphically suitable. You see... <sighs> Mature right. is not just age. It's also what you have to take out of it as a competent reader. Yes. No one's forcing you to read this. Yeah. yeah. I'm suggesting so, you do because I think that there's value to this. And I don't think it's just an edgelord comic <laughs> that, like, is meant to, you uh, no. like, like, to shake it up. I think there's the opportunity to strengthen individuals' um, ability to interpret a book through not only prose but also through art mm. in this. And that's up to you. No one is forcing you to read this book, and no one was forcing anyone to read yeah. this book. Nor is yeah. it part of continuity. No. So. Yeah. But maybe maybe their popularity, the fact that like they were really selling it and then selling even more of the second cop, they're just like, if we don't put it in continuity, it's going to be a big problem, and we just right? can't have that. So many readers will be so confused. Right. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> we did reach out to a couple comic book stores to see if anyone had ever actually seen the uncorrected advanced readers proof, mm. because I'm like really interesting yeah, of what's curious. in that yeah. and like if the one that Dio was holding was the same as the one that was sent out to others because people did get advanced readers and one person said that they got it and they said that they honestly didn't even notice and i guess they didn't have it it's a pdf they didn't have it anymore mm -hmm. i don't know but like they didn't even notice that panel mm. they were more concerned about like some of the like catholic and christian imagery and how people were going to freak out about that right but they did admit the fact was that the, the pdf was so watermarked that it's like there's a possibility i didn't see it at all mm. because there's and like i have received dc advanced reader pdfs for some of the stuff i covered for them and like they are marked up and they're marked up with your name so they oh, wow. know wow. who leaks it who leaks it I'm like, that's so smart yeah. but like it is like sometimes i'm like wait what is that what, what does that say damn it like yeah. you know stupid I mean? markup and i get yeah. it because they're trying to protect themselves yeah, yeah yeah so like i don't know but like i i have always i wonder yeah was it there the whole time who's right because you had two different camps of individuals the people yes, who created the book saying it was there it's and the people who published the book saying like oh we didn't see it yeah well it's very convenient there's a difference between it. i didn't see it and it wasn't there 
Yeah. That's a very big difference. That's well, true. Because I, I, if it's not impactful to the story, you might gloss over that. Well, yeah, but they're saying well, they blamed the carefully. printer. They blamed that it was lightened. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. Is the oh. rest of the book lightened? I would have seen it because it's not that I didn't read carefully. It's that it was it was lightened to the point that it wasn't there. Right. Or it's not that, like, <laughs> this is kind of what we all thought this label was going to be. And that right. you just have to and that, like, then the be mature enough. Caused yeah. us to change our minds, and we don't want to say that we changed our minds. Right. And I'm not saying that every book was going to have nudity or push the envelope this far. Right. But it would have made this imprint feel not only more adult, mm. but like as a place to get stories creators wanted to tell. Like, mm -hmm. but yeah, like, you get that kind of freedom here. But that we're not going to censor you that way. Yeah. And like, I understand like them bringing a product to them and before it ever gets printed being like we can't do this i'm sorry right but this was printed yeah that was true censor censorship like yes so destroying the, point where it's like, the copies after afterwards you can't even get offensive. it you yeah. can't even get it and yeah, like i ridiculous. don't like that at all yeah. like that's over the top i understand having two different versions maybe but yeah. people wouldn't want to see it. And if you didn't want to see it, I'm not saying you're a bad person or you're not an adult. You didn't want to see it. Fine. But, like, I had no problem with it. Yeah. And as I said before, I treasure the copy we have of it. I'm wondering yeah. if Pam... Lifford? Lifford. I wonder if she just got this across her desk and she's like, look, that may be the direction that DC was going in before, but that's not the direction I'm taking. And that's in. fair, and that's a whole other conversation because... Yeah. Pam had has big ideas for the future of DC mm -hmm. in in conjunction with some of the parent company. I could see why some people would say like, well, why would you do that? Right. That's the if my kids said they wanted to buy a book, I trust that Batman book is a safe book that I would approve of. Right. Uh, and I would say that's a mistake. You should never right, assume but, that. Well, but... I assumed that the magazine that said the words "play" and "boy" are for <laughs> boys to play with. But that's like every that's every argument with like kids getting violent video games. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You know what I same, mean? Same it's thing. It's just like yeah. it's I I'm not I'm not getting into that argument about whose responsibility is mm. whose, but like it does say mature reader on it, and that's black label was supposed. It's not like it just came out under DC. It right. came out under something very A specific. Label. Yeah. And if they hadn't gotten rid of Vertigo, it would have been over there. Bermejo is doing everything in it, so you mm -hmm. know it's for the most part, what he wanted to show you. Yeah. So, I really love the panel you pointed out where Harley Quinn's face is in the same yep. exact expression position. Yeah, you can literally flip as, back yeah. to it. And what's interesting is like in both cases, it's because of something that Bruce did. Yep. And the first time it's he fired a fake gun at his mom. In the yep. second case, he killed the Joker and But he caused, also, well, but he punched her Well, too. and he punched her. And it's her. still He's violence. literally punching her. Yeah. And it's interesting. he took the Joker from her. Yep. And, like, you both get that, like, same sort of, like, reactionary yeah, like, moment. Like, oh, oh, God, what have I done? What have I done? Yeah. And yeah, then, his mom just didn't stab him in the neck with a needle, though. No, no. Their reactions no, post the, that the are next, very, after that, it's different. Are very but. different. But, like, even, like, she's, like, knelt down and she's doubled over. Yeah. Like, it's just, there's so much to take out of this if you want to. Mm -hmm. So. It's obviously done for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it wasn't accidental. No. No, those, like, for me... Someone would be like, ah, oh, he was lazy. He did the same pose. Like, no, Screw it's you. it's all on purpose. Yeah, like, for great. me, the, the gentle haws in the back. Like, mm -hmm. I noticed that for the first time last night. I was like, <laughs> holy yeah. shit. I would not have seen it. I would never have seen that. That's yeah. the thing. Is like, yeah. I will see, like, an outline. I'll see a, a skyline and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm paying attention to the main stuff. Yep. I... You would have given me that book for three years. I would never have seen that. <laughs> you don't know. You might have. But, like, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, I've looked at this art so much, and I'm constantly finding new things, constantly, like, interpreting well, the story beats a little differently. It's that kind of stuff that should be celebrated. Yes, I agree. So, like, if you have any interest in this, I recommend going and grabbing it. If you started with the first issue and you're like, this isn't for me, give it another shot. We'll put a link down in the description where you can get a copy of it. It will be the censored version of it. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Like, we've already discussed at least the change that we knew. We can't tell you about any more than that because I don't know what else has changed in this. Yeah. Um, but I still think it is a really interesting story that really creates a lot of discussion, mm. which I hope to see down below and not just, you know, that I suck and I said Constantine's name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, now you're definitely going to get 
oh, that it's, it's like gonna be them. people jokingly say. Then that's that. fine. I'll take yeah. the joke. Yeah. It's a killing joke, but I'll take <laughs> it nonetheless. Ooh. 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 <laughs> now, see, now I'm wondering, are there gonna be, are there other references to the killing joke in here? If I if I dug through, it, I say I yes, more? definitely, because if you when we were actually talking about it, like I think we might have mentioned this earlier, like at another point in time. But like me, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe Sal and I talked about it. But mm. like the raindrops, oh, the yeah. raindrops are oh, a huge definitely. part of definitely. the killing joke. Yeah. So, like I said, mm. go check it out yourselves. Oh, uh, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it afterwards. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing your interpretations down below. And don't forget, everyone's in in interpretation is their own, and no one's wrong because you can't interpret incorrectly. Right. It's, it's up to you. It's how you're viewing it. The only way you can interpret it incorrectly is if you don't read it. That's it. So hopefully you'll join the discussion. Check it out. We'll see you guys next time. I'm Tiffany. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Bye, guys. So long. Cool. Now we have to have witty banter to play the, play it out. Oh, play, oh, play yes, us, that's To play fine. us out? Dude. To play show? us out. <laughs> no, no. No, it's... you always play us out, <laughs> Sal. Oh, what does that mean, play us out? <laughs> 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 to the show? <laughs>